This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Welcome to another video review. Today we're reviewing a plugin called Deep Glow by Plugin Everything. This is a much anticipated glow plugin for After Effects that pretty much replaces your default glow. Um, before I go any further, I, just do, I do wanna say that I am sponsored by Plugin Everything, so they are sponsoring this video review, but in no way do they have any input or filter into what I say. So everything I say in this review is my own opinion and they don't really have any say in the filtering of what I say. So if it sucks, I'll let you guys know um, and be real with y'all. But basically, um, Deep Glow is a plugin that pretty much simulates realistic, physically accurate glows a lot better than the real default glow. And before I even dive in to kind of show you how Deep Glow works, I want to go ahead and go straight into the Glow comparison because I know you guys, um, that's pretty much what you guys just care about, just to see kind of um, how it stacks up to the different glows um, offered in After Effects. So right here, I have a default After Effects Glow. Um, we are working in 32 bits. And I'm gonna turn off the grain layer here. Um, the AE Glow here, I didn't mess with anything at all. I just messed with the threshold, the radius, and the intensity. And I try to get all these glows to look kind of the same in terms of intensity as well as glow radius. So the default glow is set to the kind of default standard settings here with some minor tweaks. Same with the AE Glow right here. These AE Glows, I didn't mess with any of the style, the quality, anything like that, any of the chromatic aberration, stuff like that. Nope, this is just purely the radius, exposure, and the threshold to kind of get it to look kind of like everything else. And on the bottom here, I have the Universe Glow 2. I'm not really sure if this is the right Glow plugin to use to compare to the other Glow plugins, but this is the Glow that I use in Universe, so I just wanted to use this as a comparison here. But again, I didn't, well, um, the color is set to zero right here, so ignore that. Um, but pretty much everything else is set to default. The only thing I really played with, again, is intensity, threshold, and glow radius for the most part. Um, and these are the kind of the results that you're getting here with minimal tweaking. Um, and the most important part, I think, is to look at how natural things look. So the default glow is, I believe, a linear fall off. So things just fall off in a linear fashion, I believe. And so you can see like you have this nasty halo around your objects here and it just kind of evenly falls off and it looks kind of funky. It's always looked funky to me. And this is the reason why people stack a lot of glows, glow layers on top of each other to simulate like a inverse square fall off look. Um, but just with one layer of glow, this is what it's gonna look like. As you can see, the deep glow is starting to look more natural. You get this really nice hot spot, which I didn't really do anything here. I, I just applied the glow and changed the intensity and the threshold. Um, by the way, these are all set to the same settings here. I just copied them all together. So same glows on all three shapes, same glows, same glows on all three shapes. Um, and you get these really nice natural looking fall off. It looks more natural. It blends and falls off in a more natural way. And that's because that's the whole goal of the plugin here. So you can really see this in the circle shape layer right here. Looks a lot better. Um, the universe glows, as you can see, the fall off looks, I believe, similar to the default glow. I believe it's a linear fall off, but I could be wrong. Um, don't shoot me, Harry. Um, but basically, um, the universe glow is a glow that I frequently use, not because it looks, not because the fall off looks the best, because I don't think it does look that great. You see the, the fall off here in the circle looks pretty harsh. doesn't look natural at all. You kind of get this weird halo effect. Um, but the reason why I use universe glow is because sometimes for a stylistic look, it looks a little bit better than the default glow. You can kind of see a hint of color variation here. It just kind of looks a little bit better in terms of color, uh, not so much fall off. So I'll use Universe Glow when I'm going for more of a stylized um, look, whereas I'll use the regular AE Glow if I'm just trying to simply make things look hot. Um, but I've been playing around with Deep Glow a lot and it seems a lot nicer, a lot better. And the controls are kind of what I want to talk about here in this comparison. So the default glow, you guys are all familiar with. I'm not gonna talk about it, they suck. Um, so for the universe glow is, it, there's a lot of options, but I just find that I have to tweak so many different things. Like the threshold is never really right. So I always have to tweak that. Um, you know, the intensity and glow rates, I'm always going back and forth here. Um, th there's just a lot of things that I have to tweak with. Universe glow, I have to tweak a lot of things to get things looking right. Um, whereas the deep glow plugin, I can just slap it on and by default, it already looks pretty sweet as it is. Um, so yeah, this is just kind of a default reference for you guys. If you guys are kind of interested in the deep glow and how it compares to After Effects glow and Universe glow, this is how the fall off looks like. Um, and this is how it, um, it looks like with the similar intensity and similar radius, just to get a comparison. So 
if you guys are here for just that, um, y'all can leave now because I'm gonna go dive into Deep Flow itself and kind of give you a brief overview as to why I like it. So really quickly, uh, this is the Element 3D model that I have here. Default glow, cool. Uh, deep glow. So universe glow, oh sorry, regular glow, after effects glow and deep glow. So um, I try to keep the radius and intensity kind of the same here, but as you can see, the fall off is a little bit nicer in the deep glow. Um, this is not a very scientific approach here. Oh, and by the way, for the for the regular glow, I use two stacks of glows this time, just to kind of get that fall off look here. But anyways, this is one layer of deep glow, and this is what it looks like. So I'm gonna turn this off and let's just, you know, apply a new adjustment layer, call it deep glow. And let's go ahead and just apply a deep glow. And one of the great things is that it is GPU accelerated. It is fast. It has the natural fall off that everyone's trying to achieve. And um, the controls are everything you need and nothing more and nothing less, if that makes sense. So by default here, this is what you're kind of getting. And so the radius, again, is any other glow radius. It defines um, how wide of an area is the glow. So it defines how many pixels um, should you really be glowing here. So this is your standard property, uh, nothing too crazy here. So I'm gonna set it up to like 165. The exposure is kind of like the intensity, everyone knows this. Um, a cool thing to note is that the exposure is processed after the amount of pixels is processed. Um, so, um, by making this exposure brighter, you're not going to get a larger area of glow. The glow radius is set by the radius and then the exposure controls how bright those pixels are. You're not going to get a, a larger span of glow by increasing the exposure, even though that's what it might seem like. Um, it, it's just making it brighter. So the threshold is like the threshold of any other glow. It defines what level of brightness or luminance uh, will be affected by the glow here. So you can define a broad area here, or you can find a more narrow restricted area like what I'm trying to do right here, just to select these highlighted glows. So that's the threshold. Now the threshold smooth is pretty much the feathering of the threshold. So if I set the threshold smooth to zero, basically if it's this level of luminance, then it's gonna glow. If it's not this level of luminance, it's not gonna glow. It's an on and off binary situation. But if I increase the threshold smooth, um, it kind of feathers that threshold. So things that are around that threshold luminance level is also gonna glow um, and it falls off. So kind of like a smoothing up the threshold. Blending mode, screen, add, we just have these two. Um, add will break up the brightness to be over the one. Um, important if you're working with HDR stuff. Smooth blending is gonna simulate the algorithm of the Real Glow plugin. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Real Glow plugin, but it's a similar Glow plugin that's been discontinued that was on AE Scripts. This will give you kind of a softer look um, and emulates that same algorithm. Gamma correction, if you wanna emulate working in linear color space, um, they recommend keeping this checked. Aspect ratio will define the, the ratio of the glow. So if you want more of a kind of like a uh, horizontal anamorphic looking glow. You can change the aspect ratio and so on and so forth. Um, I hear that they are going to um, expand the aspect ratio and make things where you can kind of glow it in 45 degrees rather than just vertical and horizontal. So there's that. The spread is the density of the glow. So the radius defines how wide of a radius the glow is gonna be, but the spread defines how dense it's gonna be um, towards the object. So if I set the spread to like zero, um, the glow is gonna be really, really intense and concentrated towards the source of the luminance here. If I spread it to 100, um, the glow is really gonna be diffused and spread out um, towards the edge away from the source here. So density around 33 is the most realistic apparently. So it's gonna keep most of the glow kind of close to the third of the uh, source here, um, so on and so forth. So chromatic aberration, you can kind of, this is the cool part about this glow, um, is that you can actually enable chromatic aberration and you can kind of split the RGB of the glow to give it a little bit more of a natural organic look. So you can kind of see that I'm kind of spacing that out. And they have red, green, red, uh, red, blue, and all that other combinations you can kind of, kind of expect here. Um, this is something that I don't really like implemented necessarily. Um, sorry, it's not very implemented well because I feel like there's not a lot of control in the chromatic aberration compared to the universe glows. I wish that there was a way to kind of like blur them together, uh, maybe split all three channels RGB rather than just two channels. 
a way to blur them, kind of distort them a little bit to give them that lens distortion. Um, it kind of just splits the RGB, simple as that. Um, it's not very nice looking in my opinion sometimes, unless you just want very, very subtle looks. Um, so I wish I could improve upon this a little bit. Tint, just tint your glow, whatever you want. So by default, it'll tint to your source color kind of, um, but you can define a glow color like, I don't know, orange and whatever, and do like an overlay mode or a soft light mode. This is kind of a weird tint option. Um, so I normally don't use it. I think it just kind of tints the overall layer of it. Um, the really cool part about quality is that you have options to downsample and speed your renders up if you need to. So downsampling, it's gonna downsample your glows. The step multiplier um, pretty much multiplies your glow iterations. So if you have a higher radius of a glow, you would wanna have more iterations or you increase the step multiplier to do that for you. Um, if you turn down the glow to a low number, so the step multiplier to a low number, um, it can kind of create kind of like a, a grainy, low quality, kind of like a digital look, that's what they say. So increasing it by a very slow, small amount can kind of give you like this pixelated kind of glow like this. I don't know if you can see it in the, in the screen recording. Basically, kind of gives you like a nice little digital glitch. Dither will help you uh, scatter up your, your glows to prevent banding, which is very, very common. Maybe using like black backgrounds and stuff like that. Some options here. And of course, um, the cool part about deep glow is that you can isolate your glow. Let's say you're doing like 3D composites or whatever you're doing. Um, you can just isolate the glow and just show the source of the glow this way. And of course you can um, adjust the source opacity. So you can just show the glow this way. And you can fine tune the threshold and really to see what you're trying to target for the glows here. So that's what that's doing. Increases source opacity. And finally, unmult. So if you're applying um, deep glow to a text layer, you're going to need to unmult it. Um, I don't know why it doesn't just do it automatically. I don't know why you have to check this box to apply it to text layers, but I believe in the next few versions, they might just automatically just unmult the glow um, for text layers. And I, I believe it's the same for shape layers. Uh, but you know, deep load is a very, very simple plugin. It's not really complicated at all. Um, but I think it just kind of gives you a nicer result faster. Um, again, the only thing I wish that they changed was more options for chromatic aberration, maybe refine the tint section a little bit. And but overall, it's GPU accelerated. It works fast, 32 bits, no problem. And I think it gives you a more realistic glow, in my opinion, than the other glows. Um, so, you know, is it for everyone? Um, no, I don't think it's for everyone, but as someone who uses Glow in pretty much all projects in some short, uh, sort of fashion, I do use Glow very, very often. And so this plugin to me, in my opinion, is worth it. Um, if you do a lot of Glow works, you do a lot of particle works or whatever, or CG composite with Glows, it looks very, very nice. And, um, you know, you don't have to, you know, uh, you know, cut off your liver or, you know, cut off your arm for, um, like the Sapphire Glows, which costs you like a fortune. Or if you don't want to subscribe to a subscription like Universe, you can just buy the Glow, um, Deep Glow instead of like the Universe Suite. So this is overall, I think a very solid plugin, very, very good product to add to your arsenal, especially if you use Glows a lot. And so just check it out over at aescripts.com. The link will be in the description down below. Um, feel free to read the review articles. We are also giving away 10 free copies of Deep Glow um, by next week, I believe. So all you have to do is make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below in the video saying what you like best about Deep Glow or why you want it or whatever, just say hi. And I'll pick 10 random winners to, select, uh, to win Deep Glow. So it's a pretty cool prize. 10 of you guys will get it for free. Before I go, I wanna give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing, beautifully crafted, professionally designed themes to choose from. Perfectly customizable to make it the way you want it to look like. Best of all, they have awesome 24 hour support. And if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the DOJO. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash DOJO. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So this is pretty much Deep Glow for After Effects. It's a really solid plugin. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review video. Give me your thoughts down below whether or not you like this plugin, whether or not you would buy or would you not buy, it, or you know if you're happy with using stack glows or whatever. Um, so just let me know down below what you guys like best, what kind of glows you like best, and what kind of glows you use the most in your projects. That's pretty much it guys. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.